25 or 600 years that gunpowder was used to propel projectiles from weapons, virtually all weapons were loaded and fired one round at a time. When self-contained metal cartridges were introduced, the soldier's life became a little easier. But more important, the new cartridge led to the development of repeating rifles and Dr. Gatling's novel weapon. The Gatling gun was a major breakthrough in small arms design, but its greatest impact was the demand it made on arsenals to produce better cartridges. By World War I, ammunition manufacture had become highly mechanized. After that war, however, little was done to improve the technology. Consequently, the Second World War was fought with then modern weapons using cartridges produced on machinery designed around the turn of the century. In order for the United States to produce the small caliber ammunition it needed in World War II, 13 new arsenals had to be built. These same arsenals were called on again during the Korean action, still using the 50-year-old batch manufacturing technique. These plants, with their thousands of presses and people, supplied enough ammunition for the weapons of the day. Evolving tactics, however, demanded ever greater firepower from the foot soldier, as well as from crew-served and airborne automatic weapons. In World War II, a soldier could fire maybe 15 rounds per minute. Today, he can fire twice that many rounds in less than three seconds. Automatic weapons have also changed. While this soldier is emptying his clip, this helicopter gunship can fire 300 rounds in just three seconds. In the middle 60s, armies were faced with rising costs and increasing demands to trim spending it became essential to close the generation gap between modern rates of fire and obsolete machinery. In the United States, under the direction of the Army Materiel Command, the Frankfurt Arsenal in Philadelphia undertook development of the Small Caliber Ammunition Modernization Program, or SCAMP, and with the help of industries such as Gulf and Western, the gap was closed. Gulf and Western's Advanced Development and Engineering Center in Swarthmore, Pennsylvania, entered the SCAMP program with totally new concepts for manufacturing ammunition. The Swarthmore Group's designs were governed by criteria that included improved safety and economy, reduced manpower, higher rates of production, and new levels of quality control for product reliability. The Gulf and Western concepts were dramatic departures from the age-old batch manufacturing methods. Their approach was based on a series of synchronized 24-tool rotary presses or turrets fed with continuously captive parts. The approach was eminently successful. Gulf and Western's bulletin case production lines now form the heart of the most modern automated small caliber cartridge manufacturing system in the world. The prototype system is located at the Twin Cities Army Ammunition Plant near Minneapolis. Gulf and Western's case line uses eight turrets, each performing its own shaping function. Other turrets transfer work pieces in process or eject them on command. All workstations are numbered and synchronized with like-numbered stations. A part processed in station six on the first turret, for example, will be processed in station six of all subsequent turrets. The Gulf and Western case line is controlled at this console. The operator is assisted by only four online technicians a truly remarkable reduction from previous systems. The line can make 1,200 cases per minute. 
but normal operating speed produces approximately 1,080 cases per minute, or 18 cases per second. Cartridge cases are made from cups. These are for 5.56 millimeter ammunition. Gulf and Western's lines are easily converted to other sizes by changing the tooling and transport system. On the case line, clips on a series of chains, shown in slow motion, carry the work-oriented parts from turret to turret. The tooling is actuated by cam followers rolling on fixed cams. This reduces tool impact and provides longer tool life. The advanced Gulf and Western design of the first two presses eliminates five separate processes of earlier production systems. The turrets draw or lengthen the cups. The next three turrets form the head and primer pocket, machine the head to its final shape, and pierce the vent hole in the base. The work-hardened cases are re-spaced on a slower chain, cleaned, annealed in a short induction coil, and lubricated, all in one continuous captive operation. They are then replaced on another high-speed chain. Two similar turrets perform the final shaping operations. These turrets taper the shoulder and form the neck and mouth. The last turret trims the cases to their finished length. All presses that generate scrap slugs or turnings automatically remove the scrap and deposit it in containers for salvage. The last production operation includes final cleaning, stress relief, and induction heat treating the case, mouth, and neck, again in a single continuous captive process. The cases are now finished. Two minutes ago, they were cups. A unique feature of Gulf and Western's machinery is selective sampling of workpieces to monitor tool performance at any workstation without interrupting production. When a sample shows tool wear, the supply of cups to that station's number is immobilized while production continues at the other 23 stations. Only after several stations are immobilized is the line stopped to change the tools. Modular tooling itself is a breakthrough in cartridge manufacturing. It provides a more precise tool alignment that results in superior quality products. All tools and tool holders on a given press are interchangeable. A supply of spares permits quick tool replacement so that worn tooling can be repaired without interfering with production. Another innovative feature of Gulf and Western's lines are the turret simulators. After the tooling has been repaired and preset, these devices permit technicians to test the highly precise alignment by making actual parts in the repair shop. The Gulf and Western bullet line uses 10 synchronized turrets. It produces jacketed lead bullet assemblies at the same rate as the case line. Bullet jackets are also made from preformed cups that are oriented and distributed by a feeder that is synchronized with the turrets. Instead of clips and chains, the bullet lines use mechanical fingers to transfer the work-oriented work pieces between turrets. The fingers close on the work pieces to remove them from one turret and release them after placing them in the next.
The first two turrets lengthen and trim the cups. The next two form the point. Lead for the bullets enters the line from the rear of the machinery and is pressed into the jackets. The bullet assemblies then move successively two turrets that form the back end of the bullet, or boat tail, inscribe the knurled cantilever ring for assembly with the case, and finish forming the boat tail. The final turret assures correct diameter. Bullet line tooling, like the case line, is actuated by cam followers. The Gulf and Western bullet line also features selective sampling, individual tool station shutoff, interchangeable tooling, and offline tool repair. This tool change takes just 10 seconds. Simulators are also provided for the bullet line tooling. The two-hand operation of this simulator is typical of the operator safety designed into all Gulf and Western machinery. Operators need only basic mechanical skills. Just four men operate the bullet line. In addition, this line requires only one-fifth the floor area of conventional systems and produces finished bullet assemblies from raw materials in just 30 seconds. This is traditional arsenal machinery. These Gulf and Western turrets each replace one whole row of the old equipment. Old arsenals require heavy manpower. The Gulf and Western lines need 80% fewer people. Crank presses use violent impact forces. Rotary turrets use cams and followers that significantly increase tool life and make better products. Parts used to be moved by hand between many processes. Gulf and Western moves them in a continuously captive operation. Batch manufacturing creates inventories because processes operate at different speeds. All Gulf and Western turrets and processes operate at the same rate and produce parts from raw material in minutes instead of days. Tool repairs on conventional machinery take up to an hour. Gulf and Western tool modules are replaced in seconds and repaired offline without interfering with production. Fewer machines, less people, higher quality product, longer tool life, captive work, smaller facilities, no work in process storage, higher production rates. All these features translate into savings for the operating command. The case and bullet systems you have seen are the prototypes. They were built to demonstrate and prove out the capability of the revolutionary concept of high-speed continuous process ammunition production. But they have served their purpose. Even more modern bullet and case production systems, which incorporate valuable changes gained from experience in operating the prototypes, are installed at the Lake City Army Ammunition Plant near Independence, Missouri. These production systems feature significant improvements in equipment, operation, and maintainability. The most obvious improvement on the case systems is the floor level installation that simplifies equipment inspection and maintenance. In addition, the linear cup feeders have been replaced by more modern rotary feeders that are not only more reliable, but also eliminate one entire tarred assembly 
used in the prototype system to control cup flow. Another important improvement is more efficient and flexible control systems. The console's utility has been enhanced by the addition of electronic displays that provide the operators with continuous information on system status. The console operators and the technicians are in constant voice communication. Tool module changes on the case system turrets have been further simplified to speed up replacement when tool wear approaches allowable tolerances. A dedicated tool repair and testing facility is located near the production lines. Here, the modules are disassembled, the tooling replaced, and the precise alignment verified in the appropriate turret simulator. This equipment is the most modern and reliable bullet and case-making machinery in service in the world today, and will continue to be so for many years to come. Additional Gulf and Western systems load primed cases with propellant and assemble them with bullets into finished cartridges at the same rate of output. Together, these systems will produce more small caliber rounds at a faster rate and with less use of space, energy, and manpower than has ever before been possible. And when the cartridges are ready, they will be conveyed to Gulf and Western's automatic packaging lines, where they will be successively loaded in bandoliers, placed in ammunition cans, and crated. They will even be automatically palletized and banded for shipment, all in one integrated system, virtually an entire automated small caliber arsenal supplied by Gulf and Western. Gulf and Western, helping to fill the breach through modern manufacturing technologies.